Okay, so I'll just, just repeat that. So you don't experience what you don't resist with pain. So one of the things is uh, to learn whenever you face pain to practice not resisting. And if you can, and what I've experienced is if you don't resist on the split second pain is about to rise, it, it doesn't materialize. So I used to get cramps yeah, regularly, uh, you know, after my kidney failure, I used to get cramps regularly in my legs, wake up and get the cramps. But I, if I, you know, you, you have the attitude of just welcoming and not resisting, which is the opposite of like trying to push things away or not want things to happen. You just almost like symbolically you welcome it 100% with zero resistance, like let it all come up. And uh, when I did that perfectly, like there would be no, no cramp at all. And if you resisted as it was coming up, like I don't want this to be here, I'd rather it not be here, then it would, it would materialize and you'd be limping, around, be limping around. So that's one of the things I, I learned. And um, I remember once, so every time there was an opportunity for pain, it'd be like, okay, can I catch it and not resist at all? And uh, I remember once, um, I think this was it actually, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was quite a funny one. Because in my days of um, compulsive overeating, before I joined a 12-step group, um, but I was aware of Hawkins' work, and you know the doctors had said avoid high potassium foods, and I binged out on bananas because I was in that addictive cycle. So I just you know, I was trying to commit suicide with bananas, which I think is quite funny. But anyway, <laughs> avoid bananas or you get a heart attack. And I binged on binged on bananas. So. Banana side. There you go. So, if anyone of this video is for anyone who wants to commit banana side, and uh, so there was the bananas, and then I had a, I had a, I had, a, I had a phone call. You know, they had just done my blood test. You have to come straight into A and E to have emergency treatment. You're about to have a heart attack because my I had a continued failure and I had the bananas. So I came in, and then because it's a heart attack, they have a needle. I'm not exaggerating. It's like that big. You know, not little tiny little needles. You know, they plunge it straight down your arm. I suppose it's, I suppose it's to get to the heart as quickly as possible and administer the, the treatment very deeply. Because I get those little needles all the time, but, but this was a big thing. So I looked at the needle that they were going to put, uh, administer this uh, emergency treatment for for uh, for uh, you know for my high potassium levels and the risk of a heart attack. And I thought, great, you know, don't resist as they try and plunge this mega needle, like you know. Don't resist and just welcome it 100% as they stick it in, you know, start to squeeze it down your vein. So I did that and I go like, okay, this is a great chance to do it. And this is true. I started to lose consciousness and I was going off into like a heavenly bliss as they were like plunging the needle in. And they actually like, they were worried because they thought I was diabetic and I was losing consciousness. But it wasn't that, I was going off into bliss. So suddenly like it was emergencies and they were giving me like strawberry milkshakes, like have some sugar or whatever. But that was, my, that was a great experience that if you don't resist and you, you sort of see the, the pain coming your way and you don't resist, actually you can go off into like a heavenly bliss. Now there was, an, uh, there was a thing, another one with pain, which was a, more grueling, was um, I knew like Hawkins went through, um, through his thumb amputation uh, without anaesthetic and then he went off into like sublime bliss by not resisting. So that, that's quite heavy duty, you know, you know, to have like someone chopping bits of you off without anaesthetic and just using non-resistance. Mm -hmm. So uh, intuitively I knew I, wouldn't, I did have the general anaesthetic for my transplant, but I said I'd refuse all painkillers after the general anaesthetic when I came out. So I did refuse, you know, I, I, re I refused to use the morphine pump, they took it away, I asked them not to give me any painkillers and I just took the pain after, you know, they made, a, you know, they made quite a big incision to, to put the kidney in. And it was, um, so this thing, like when, a, when you, hit, you hit with huge amounts of pain, is to not resist. And it was, it was extreme. It did feel like a kitchen knife. Someone had left a kitchen knife by mistake in your stomach. But you don't resist. You just don't resist. And you don't resist. And I was doing the Lord's Prayer as well. And I was not resisting, and then I re it was, there was a realization, it, was, it had gone on for several hours of this non-stop pain, that there would be no sleep. And then it was like doing the Lord's and suddenly it popped in, like I had Muji on my headphones. So I put Muji on the headphones, and 
Obviously, he's saying, what's the witness, sir, or the observer? What's the witness, sir, and the observer? So I went to the witness, sir, and then suddenly I was asleep. It vanished, you know, and then I woke up, and then the pain vanished. And so that was the... And, and the thing was, like, I got up out of my bed, and the doctor was like... And he got it. The doctor understood what happened. Like, I recovered. Because I didn't use any painkillers, I recovered very quickly. And I got out of bed very, very quickly. And he said, oh, you didn't use painkillers. He knew it. Mm. That by not by taking the pain and not numbing out with all the painkillers, the body had healed and it was like a perfect operation and it's gone well and it's gone brilliantly. And uh, so that's the thing. But it's like a practice of non-resistance. And sometimes it can, can go for a while. Like you can be hit by something and you just practice non-resistance. But I, I would do multiple things. Like it sounds like, like the pain is like heavy and sustained, yeah? It's heavy and sustained pain. If it's heavy and sustained pain, like a huge karmic tranche of some horrific pain, then, um, you know, there's feel, feeling the feelings, don't resist and, and experience and don't label, or you can practice the observer, or, or put Muji on in the background, what's witnessing the pain, yeah? What's witnessing the pain? Or doing the Lord's Prayer, cancelling it, so you just do, you do them in whatever intuitive style goes. Uh, and um, if you do it without AIDS, on the other side, you know, you, you've spiritually grown uh, through, through doing it. So sometimes they're great, um, like going through the, going th after the operation without any painkillers was a great thing because your fear of pain diminishes enormously because you can go well if I can take an op if I can go through an operation and afterwards not take painkillers then the small stuff becomes easy you see the small stuff becomes easy or if you can take big needles but the one thing I can say from my experience is if you resist it, you, you'll make it a hundred times worse and even if you're in it practicing non-resistance is the best way or the observer because the more you resist or don't want it to be there Another thing is, like, if, if you're being hit by a lot of pain and a lot of things are racking you, is in Feel the Feelings, you're trying to become one with it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, by, so let's say I'm hit by something and there's resistance and I'm feeling the pain. It's like you want to merge with it mm -hmm. and not resist. And then at a certain point, you, there's like a oneness mm -hmm. and then it starts to dissolve, you see. So you're just letting go of the innate resistance to being one with it, and then it starts to evaporate and starts to dissolve. Or if you can go to the observer, that can be faster. But probably if there was a lot of pain, just putting some muji on, you know, what's witnessing, what's observing. I think the great thing with muji on YouTube is you can put muji pain or muji grief, and you get a video on muji talking about grief, or muji talking about pain, or cancer. So you can, you can go and you can pick up the, the witnessing field. Uh, with it. Uh, in terms of the uh, Hawkins anti-karma prayer, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's created pain in others in this lifetime and past lifetimes, or God did not create pain in whatever area of the body it is and so it is not real, or to pray to God for, um, for guidance or enlightenment as to what is the symbolic meaning of why this pain is showing up in life and sometimes an intuition may come as to what, what's the karmic significance of it. Um, so yeah.